G'day guys, Liam Fitzpatrick here. I finally got around to filming the second installment of my How to Catch Brimon Lures. So this is going to be part two, the lures. Just going to cover all the basic, you know, brim lures out there. Uh, you know, the tournament winning stuff, you know, the proven baits, what I predominantly fish. Um, not exactly all brands, just styles of baits. Where to fish them, what time of year, quick how to fish them. Um, you know, the way I see it, we'll just do top to bottom. I'll start off with top water surface baits. Um, yeah, we'll work our way down, cover that in sort of mid-water column stuff and yeah, then yeah, hit the bottom, you know, do all the bottom baits. So hopefully I can fit it all in. Um, yeah, I've got a few baits to cover, but yeah, it should be sweet. We'll, we'll kick it off. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to start off with just your basic surface lures. It's going to be your little cup face popper. Designed to pull and drag a lot of water, a lot of air into the water. So it makes a lot of commotion. So a noisy little bait. Good for low light situations. Summertime when your fish are up the creeks, they're aggressive, there's heaps of you know terrestrial life around. Anytime you want to create as much commotion as you can to bring the fish to your bait, that's when you're gonna grab a little popper. So while we're talking poppers, you got your little creature bait. So that's this little grasshopper pattern. You can get cicada patterns. That's your, your sort of bait you're gonna throw summertime. Up around that eucalypt line of the creeks, once the brim push right up river, um, all that terrestrial life comes out, your cicadas, I so say your grasshoppers, any of that sort of stuff, that's the place you're gonna throw that sort of bait. So along the lines of the creature bait, you've got uh, you know, like your imitation baits. So that's your, your splash prawn. So that's uh, like a bit of a skip, skipping, splashing style with that, uh, that bib kicked up there and a mix between like your pencil baits. I'll get to those in a minute, but good imitation to mimic you know, fleeing prawns, you know, any sort of bait fish that are jittery, um, you know, or where you want a constant action to it. That's the sort of bait you're going to throw. So another prawn imitation is that little PX45. They do that in a 55 model as well. It's still a prawn pattern. You know, it's designed to mimic the, the fleeing prawn, the skipping prawn. But the profile's getting closer to more of that stick bait style, the walk the dog action. You've got to impart a lot more of the action to this bait with your rod tip, with the way you work it. So good bait for calmer situations. Um, sunny, you know, still where you can actually get that bait, work that rod tip, get it to walk the dog, zigzag, skip, you know, real visual bait where you can see it looks a lot like a prawn. It's got the little feelers and whatnot. Awesome little bait. One of those must haves, I reckon. So with surface, with top water, you've also got the option to fish surface soft plastics or a top water soft plastic. Either something that's going to float or something that it's slowly sink. This is the one of the baits that started a lot of that. That's the pink grub. That's the Okiyami color uh, in Ecogee's Grass Minnow M. It means shrimp. It's that translucent pink. Again, it's one of those baits. It was a must-have back in the day. Smashed a heap of brim on the Gold Coast. Fish and structure, fish and sandy drop-offs. Anywhere there was a um, chance of jelly prawns or any sort of bait fish, like these things just killed it. Run that on a little worm hook. So that's just fully unweighted. I'll let my shirt, you see it better. Just on the worm hook. This then morphed into fish and unweighted aquas, which is the next one I'll show you. But um, again, another cool little technique, definitely something worth learning, pink grubbing. So that pink grubbing technique brought us to this. Once they released the Eco Gear Aqua and the Brim Prawns, putting them on a worm hook, same sort of deal, unweighted. This technique, you can work this guy, skip him across the top, but if the fish follow or the fish, you know, if you want to drop it down somewhere, you can stop, pause, and that'll slowly sink. And that just drifts down into the, into the domain of the brim and, and they just eat this. It's one of those tournament staples. You've got to have this technique in your arsenal. Fully unweighted, on a worm hook, Eco Gear Aqua Brim Prawn, just a must. All right, next top water bait, Bent Minnow. Now I reckon they use the term loosely, uh, game changer in fishing. I reckon you hear it a fair bit when it's not quite the case, but when these baits first came out, they were a proper game changer. Now the bent minnow, again, it's top water surface bait. It's designed to float on top. It's a dying bait fish profile pattern action. Designed to sit there on top, you twitch it down, get it subsurface, and you get this crazy subsurface action out of it. These things are just big brim magnets. Like they're, they're one of those must-haves in your tackle box. Fish them in um, you know, clear water, Still a condition, so you can get that good action out of it, but it's a kind of bait, you know, you can throw in a bit of chop, a bit of slop. It's not gonna make a difference. Once it's pulled down and under and it's doing its crazy thing, it's one of those baits, big brim just can't resist it. 
So while we're on the topic of the bent minnow, um, you know, there's a heap of other baits out there, like jointed, little breaks in the body, um, dying, injured, fleeing, dead, sinking bait fish sort of profiles out there. I don't own a lot of them, like um, this is the main one you need to have. Yeah, there's crazy cool baits that have got toe points like in the middle of the body designed to, as you tweak them, they work parallel to a rock wall or parallel to a pontoon. So there's a heap of other cool dying bait fish sort of patterns out there that, um, that you can discover, definitely. All right, these next type of surface baits probably aren't used that much. You don't hear a lot of people speaking about them. Back in the day when, you know, I'm in Queensland, so Southeast Queensland, Australia, if you guys overseas, um, we got Morton Bay. Morton Bay, these things used to be killer. Big bait, that's a big wake bait, that's the anthrax. Now, this led us to other big baits, I'll get to them in a second, but the wake baits, you know, is a, a bait designed to just stay subsurface. So just break under the surface, it'll float back up so you can keep it back up, cause some commotion, slow wind, crank it down, just get it subsurface, just get it cruising through, making a bit of a bow wake, bit of a ripple. Um, and not overly used as much these days, I don't think. I don't even use them that much anymore, but they were always a really good big brim catcher out around those offshore-y, you know, rough, you know, turbulent kind of areas. Just a big bait the fish could see they could hone in on. But um, yeah, wake bait. All right, we're getting to the last style of uh, top water bait, surface baits. Just your pencil bait or your stick bait. So this is your classic walk the dog, um, designed to, you know, you use your rod to impart the action on this bait. Um, this is a big bait. Uh, this is the Smith Cocoon. We stumbled onto these things like after fishing those anthraxes. Um, Bay Islands, big brim. They just smash these things. Um, you know, depending on where you are, what kind of bait you got, we thought it was a lot of the, the bigger gar, the bigger hardies, whatever they're eating out there that's a bigger bait. This thing used to just draw the big bites. But a stick bait. That leads me to subsurface. Um, I haven't got one to show you. For some reason, I can't track one down. But um, you stick your stick bait also then goes into your sinking stick bait. So we're going into subsurface baits now. Um, it's another deadly technique for horizontal presentation, but underwater. So you'll get that same walk the dog action out of a sinking stick bait or a sinking minnow. Um, but yeah, it's, it's great for the areas where you're working, you know, boat hulls, pontoons. You've got schools of bait and you want to mimic that bait. So sinking minnow, that'll take us into Subsurface, um, yeah, we'll keep going down from there. So once we hit subsurface, your shallow run and jerk baits come into play. Now, these aren't that big up here in Queensland. Uh, it all depends on the bait fish and where you are. I know down south, like the guys that chase Southern Black Brim and things like that, they've got your smelt, Australian smelt, little sea running smelt. A lot of the baits down there are that shallow, elongated jerk bait style of bait. Uh, awesome little lures, but just not something we use a hell of a lot up here. But yeah, really cool. So this is the must-have of the shallow jerkbait style little little baits. That's your Norrie's laydown minnow. This guy is like a must-have. Go down Tassie, anywhere there's those big southern black brim. Uh, it's definitely one of those ones you've got to have in your box. But just shallow running jerkbait. Good for your shallow reefs again. Um, you know, you can work that through timber. It's going to be a suspending lure depending on salinity, fresh water and salt. You know, it's going to be a bit buoyant depending on where you are. But um, yeah, awesome little jerk bait. Match the hatch. Fish those. Uh, fish them down south. Match those little bait fish they get down there. And again, like I said, one of those baits you've got to have in your box. Your subsurface baits, your midwater column baits. You know they're gonna be the domain of the bib minnow. Uh, so that's your little shallow diver. Oh, that's a CK40. That's your basic standard little fat profiled bib minnow. You know that's gonna dive to a couple of feet, depending on your bib size. Your bib size is gonna determine. Your mids, your shallows, your deeps, your, your double deeps, all that sort of stuff. Um, with a bait like this, like that shallow run and bait, good for the flats, good for weedy, shallow areas. Um, great for rocky, reefy areas where you're you know, a couple foot of water. That's the kind of bait you're going to throw. Um, just while we're there, like depending on the day too. You know, if you've got bright sun, dirty water, you know, do you need something with a rattle in it? Do you want to be throwing a silent? Is it pressured water? Should I have a solid color on that's gonna silhouette better in dirty water? Should I run that clear color that's gonna let the sunlight through and reflect more colors? They're all the little things you're gonna to have to determine on any given day. You know, like, I'll just, I'm gonna keep running through the lures, but I think it quickly touch on that while we're there, but that's your little shallow runner. Uh, next we'll go to like a, a mid depth. So like a mid, I'll show you one of them. 
All right, so this is probably like a classic mid-depth range lure. That's your SX-47F. Uh, the SX-40F was one of those mainstays for years. You know, it's, it still is. Um, I like to throw a little bit bigger bait these days just to, to draw bigger fish and get a bit more distance on it. But, you know, you can see it's got a little bit bigger bib. Again, transparent color would be good for clear water, sunny conditions. Again, that's those sorts of things you'd have to figure out on the day. But um, like your mid-range bib minnow, subsurface you're still going to get six to eight feet out of something like that um you know great for like i said clear water. this was the gold coast special that color clear water run it down the edge of the sandy bits the rocky drop-offs past pontoons great bait for working structure like i said rocks you know pontoons pylons all that sort of thing just one of those again one of those must-have baits all right so this is your classic deep diver that's still just a little cx35 but you can see the difference in the bib that guy's gonna do your deeper rock walls, um, you know, your pontoons, your pylons, anywhere you need to get a bait down a little deeper, that's that sort of size that's gonna do it. So while we're talking cranks, you, we've done the shallow crank, you can see this is like a super shallow, almost like a wake bait, but little shallow crank. But it's your jointed, there's a heap of jointed options out there on the market as well. Just something that uh, at a slow wind, gives you a bit more action in a lure. Uh, you know, fish that anyway, you're going to fish a little crank, obviously, to suit, but uh, just another optional lure on the market out there that's uh, definitely worth having a look at. All right, so a transition bait from mid-water through to the bottom, it's got to be a soft plastic. You know, this is going to always hit the bottom, it's got lead on it, depending on wind and current, that's going to obviously be your variables, but a weighted jig head rig soft plastic, depending on the weight you go, is going to be something you could still fish mid-water, you know, if you're just letting it get so far and hopping it and retrieving it and keeping it moving. But eventually you're going to go to the bottom. So depending on what weight you go with, so you've got options when you want to rig it now. You've got hook size to suit the size of the bait and you've got lead or the weight of the jig head to suit the depth, you know, the current, the wind, what's going on on the day. So I'll fish anything from 140th, 120th through to your 16th. Up to about an eighth, maybe a quarter, fishing, you know, seaways and ocean entrances. But, um, yeah, your jig head rig soft plastic. Definitely a bottom bait once you start putting it on jig heads, but we'll go through a couple of these. So when it comes to your actual soft plastics that you're going to fish on the bottom, you've got a few different styles. You've got your bass minnow or your jerk shad style bait, just that straight tail bait. Now that's, uh, this was one of those original baits that first came out, your Berkeley Power Bait, you know, three inch bass, you know, that's your smell color, but this was one of my go-to baits for so many years. Uh, rig that on whatever jig head size you need to, and that's a proven brim catcher. But from there, you've got different types of soft plastics that are gonna imitate, so you've got prawn patterns, you've got biodegradable baits, you've got your gulp range, you've got your Eco Gear Aqua range, You've got prawn imitations, soft plastic crab imitations. There's so many different baits now that you can jig head rig to catch brim. All right, so once we start talking bottom baits, something that's going straight down, something you're gonna work on schooling brim, you know, aggregations in deeper water, so like around you know, deep holes, um, bottoms of bridge pylons, places where you need to get a bait down to the fish. That's, uh, that's your VX40. This thing was one of those first baits that came out. There's obviously a heap of blades on the market now, but that's, uh, that's one of the originals. Like I said, great bait for anywhere where they're gonna hold deep, um, like your seaways, your open ocean, your high current sort of areas, big flows, um, you know, where the fish are down deep. So breeding aggregations, you know, times when they're gonna school up, um, any of those sorts of applications are gonna suit your blades. All right, sticking with blades, next we had the little ZX. That's a little ZX35. So that's your little prawn pattern blade, metal blade, you know, all the weights down the bottom here. The biggest thing with each of those ZX, you know, those assist hooks that came out with these. We retrofit so many lures nowadays with those little assist hooks because of how effective they were on pin and fish. You know, it all started with this little guy. There's, um, there's bigger models in that size, same as that last one, that VX goes up and down in size, um, 35 through to 45, I think they do nowadays. Um, but yeah, depending on your, your, your depth of water, your current, uh, you've got a few options in size and weight in these guys. Yeah, which, with the evolution of those blades, um, these guys were next along, the Brimmer Vibe. So same as the ZX, but just a polycarb. So you can see it's translucent, that guy. Uh, still got the molded weight on the bottom here. 
Awesome deep water bait, great for, you know, like I said before, um, you know, you schooled fish, deep aggregations, bottoms of pylons, uh, dirty water and low light too, because they're all vibration baits. They pump out a lot of vibration, which the fish pick up with their lateral line. So really good when the fish can't see the bait as well. So pump out a heap of vibe, go to something like a blade. So with your vibes, so there's a few different types of vibes on the market. Little hard vibes, little soft vibes. So this is your little rubber material, kind of soft vibe. Same sort of deal, deeper water, you know, presentations in, in deep situations where you want to get a bait down to the fish. And like I said, low light, dirty water. You're pumping out a lot of vibration. These guys are designed to pump out those vibrations you know, that the fish are so used to picking up on. All right, last but not least, probably my favorite at the moment, Crank a crab. Now these things are designed to fish on the bottom, but they work great on that slow sink. So they come in a light and a heavy model. You know, I've got a heap of videos out there on them, so there's plenty of info on these guys kicking around. That um, work really well dragging fish off the structure, like say drifting down beside a pylon, hitting the bottom, the fish has followed it down, these little floating claws up in the air, and the big brim to smash these things. Dead set, like another must have. One, I hate to say it, but this was one of those game changers when it first came out. Like these things just caught and they caught big fish and they still catch big fish. All right, guys, so that's the end of it. That's uh, that's the, the lures. That's the, the lures that I throw, the lures you, you should throw, the lures that are worth throwing. Um, yeah, if I didn't cover all that as well as I should have, there's probably baits I missed. There's probably stuff I didn't cover quite as concisely as you probably needed me to. That's what the comments section for. Hit us up in the comments if there's something I didn't say or there's something you need to know. Um, if you liked it, give us a thumbs up, you know, like it, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. If you are a subscriber, make sure you go back, check that that bell's been rung so you get all the notifications. If you're new to the channel, click that bell when you subscribe. Anything else, hit us up. Don't hesitate to ask, I'll always reply. Um, thanks for watching guys, we'll catch you next time.